I dare say you go to any farmer in America and say, do you know anything about propane? They will all say, absolutely. I know everything about propane because propane has been a part of their life since they were born on the farm. No one knows more about how propane is used on a farm than that farm boy right there. Cinch Munson's only been with us four months. Four months. <laughs> And he comes to us with the soul of a farmer and now the brain of a propane guy. So I'm going to let him talk to you about it. <laughs> He's just talking into it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, propane is very important in agriculture. And, and on the flip side, agriculture is very important to the propane industry as well. Uh, you look at the propane market, it's over $800 billion industry when you look at the, the or the ag market, $800 billion industry when you look at agriculture and all the value added pieces. So it's, it's a big industry, over 2 million farmers across the United States. Of those, more than 40% of them use propane in their operation. So it's very important for them that they have propane. For the propane industry, that, that accounts for 10% of what, you know, the demand for propane. Over 800 million gallons of propane go into the agriculture market every year. And as Tucker said, it's very important. I grew up in rural Nebraska, and you know, I've always looked at propane as kind of rural America's fuel source. It's, it's a key part of what happens. At PERC, we've done a number of things in recent years to develop new technologies, kind of support product development. And in some of those areas right here, we've got an irrigation engine. And we'll talk quite a bit about irrigation engines today. Um, since 2009, we've brought a number of new engines to the market. And I'll talk a little bit about performance. I'll let uh, Pete Stout with Origin Engines and Jeremy with um, PSI talk a little bit about their industrial engines. But uh, we're seeing a good uptake on that with some real good advantages. Here we've got a picture of a grain dryer. And uh, that's a big market. Grain dryers use a lot of propane every fall to dry grain. Um, in addition, obviously, we've got building heat for animals, greenhouses water heat plus farmers use you know they drive vehicles they mow yards generators are important to them so it's a very important industry um, <clears throat> a little bit why farmers rely on propane um, i'll start out with clean uh, you know if we look at this engine right here some research we've done uh, irrigation engines a propane irrigation engine puts off 20 percent less fewer greenhouse gases than a uh, gasoline engine, 11% fewer greenhouse, ga greenhouse gases than diesel engine. They're clean, propane's affordable. Uh, again, if we talk about irrigation and some research we've done, uh, a, new, a, new a new industrial engine, propane engine, will cost about half the cost of a new tier four <coughs> diesel engine, and then cost, or yeah, cost 50, over 50%, about 56% less to run that engine. So it's very affordable. The payback on a new engine is very quick. And you know, at the end of a year, you're just putting money in your pocket the more it runs. It's reliable. Um, like I said, it's, it's the fuel source of rural America. It's, it's there when it's needed. It's efficient. Um, if we talk about grain dryers, some of the new grain dryers that we've helped companies like GSI and Matthews Company develop in the last couple of years, uh, farmers are seeing that they're saving 50% Hmm. on their fuel usage by upgrading their grain dryers. So it's efficient. We continue to look at that because we want people to stay with using propane. Um, and again, it's, it's safe, um, no spillage issues, very few, you know, no, no pilferage issues. So it's a great fuel source for a farm. Um, as I mentioned, irrigation is an area we've put a lot of emphasis in the last number of years. We've come out with a number of new engines. Both of these here, this 8.8 .8 liter PSI, and this is a 9.1 liter origin engine that will be coming out in January, are new to the market. The performance on these engines has been spectacular. I think I'll go ahead and turn it over to Pete to talk a little bit about this, and then we'll let Jeremy talk about the PSI engine. Very good. Thank you, Cinch. Uh, again, my name is Pete Stout, and I'm with Origin Engines, and uh, just what basically what Cinch referenced, and Jeremy and, and Bob before that was. You know, there's a bunch of new engines that have come to market over the last five years. A uh, big reason for that is because of uh, EPA regulations on what they call CAFE standards, which is corporate average fuel economy. And so all of the on-highway vehicles, the cars, pickups and trucks that GM, Ford, and Chrysler have made, they've got to make leaps and bounds and improvements upon their, their fuel efficiency. But what that means for the non-road market, GM, Ford, Chrysler historically held a, a large percentage of that market share. 
the engines that they're producing today and going forward aren't going to be used or aren't, they aren't what the farmers want. They're not what the industrial community is asking for. I use my pickup for an example. I have a Ford EcoBoost pickup. It's a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged engine. It's a great engine, but the farmer doesn't can't use that engine to run propane and for his irrigation application. So what we did is we've gone, gone to the market over the last five or six years. We've talked with independent producers, farmers, uh, oil and gas uh, producers, and we asked them what they need. And the, the adage they gave us was there's no uh, replacement for displacement. So they want large displacement, low speed engines that are designed to run on propane. And so that's what we did. Uh, kind of a novel idea was just listen to the customer. But they want engines designed from the ground up specifically for propane, specifically for low speed applications. Most of these applications, even if running irrigation or a max speed of 2600 RPM, so it allowed us to really design the engine, really hone in on what the application was, and then step back as we begin to design that engine from the ground up for low speed applications for irrigation, power generation, oil and gas production. So the, the eight liter engine that we, uh, the Perkin originally got involved with us and brought to market was a replacement for the GM 8.1 liter engine. Uh, as we brought that eight liter to market, uh, quickly the producers in the, from around the world said, how big of an engine can you guys build? So we designed a 10.3 liter engine. That 10.3 liter engine brought propane into a horsepower segment previously that wasn't uh, on the market. So we're up over 250 horsepower for prime duty applications. And then recently we now have a 9.1 liter that we'll be uh, introducing to the market in January. And then I'll have Jeremy come up and talk a little bit about the 8.8 liter PSI, which obviously he talked about on on-road, but we see it in a lot of uh, industrial applications as well. Yeah, and I, I'll start with just kind of talking about the relationship with PERC. Um, our original funding or funding request to PERC was smaller engines, 3 liter, 4.3 liter, 5.7 liter. So they were much smaller applications used for irrigation. And um, that was how we started. And, and we heard the same thing, the voice of the market said, there's no replacement for displacement, so we kept moving up the, the, uh, the horsepower and torque band. And in doing that, we came to a 5.7 and now into the 8.8. .8. And beyond that, we've seen newer markets where the requirement for irrigation is much bigger in California and some of the air quality management districts where they have large diesels pumping a lot of water. And so they, they've asked us to continue to, to push that forward. So we went to from the 8.8 .8 liter all the way up to 22 liters. And uh, that's really given us a new stranglehold on the market to offer a much wider bandwidth of product to the irrigation market. Um, those products are also leveraged, uh, again, volumetrically through other industrial applications. We sell them to the oil and gas market. So we're, we're on kind of both sides of the fence. We're helping the irrigation side. We're also ha helping with the production of natural gas and propane. And so those, those units are used by GE and various others um, in the production of natural gas. And then as the propane comes up, we're, we're using it on the irrigation side as well. So from three liters all the way up to 22 liters today. Uh, and we're hoping to continue to move that needle forward as we've uh, started a new relationship with Perkins, a company that's owned by Caterpillar. Um, we are the largest Perkins dealer or distributor in North America. Uh, again, back to our original industrial lineage, our sister company, Power Great Lakes, um, is, the, is a fairly large territory in North America selling diesel product. We recognize the same challenges. Tier 4 um, diesel product had you know, extremely stringent uh, emissions regulations, and it's driven the cost and complexity and serviceability of those engines to a point where propane's really made a, a huge impact on the market. And so in some of those California uh, uh, air quality management district uh, regions, we're seeing a huge shift towards propane, where it's obviously widely available, uh, has a much easier integration piece, and we'll have a full range of products, which not only helps the market from having one supplier, but also serviceability and, and usability of that product in, in those, uh, those markets. So we're helping kind of break some of the new markets that may have traditionally been a natural gas state and, and turn them into propane states.